intestinal parasites eat into the wall of the human intestine, suck blood, excrete toxins, and interfere with nutrition. Okinawa used to be a paradise for parasites. But one man boldly confronted the problem. He was Isamu Yaka, the founder of the Okinawa Parasite Control Association. Until after World War II, people thought it was natural to have parasites in their stomachs. The Okinawa Parasite Control Association and the mass media worked together in a campaign against parasites. The Zero Parasite Campaign. How could so many parasites be eradicated in just 50 years? Let us see how a private health group achieved remarkable success by complementing the public health activities of the government. With its high temperatures and high humidity, subtropical Okinawa offers an ideal environment for parasites. Since long before the Second World War, hookworm, ascaris, pinworm, and whipworm had been highly prevalent in Okinawa. After the war, there was still a high rate of parasitic infection, but the public health centers were too busy with the fight against TB to confront the problem. In 1957, one man thought it strange that sales of parasiticides were so low despite the high incidence of hookworm. That man was Isamu Yaka, a self-employed pharmacist who owned a pharmacy in Naha City. To learn about the parasite situation in Okinawa, Mr. Yaka enlisted the cooperation of Tokyo University's Institute for Infectious Disease in surveying Ozato Village on Okinawa's main island. The results of the survey were almost unbelievable. Rates of infection by hookworm averaged 78.9%, reaching 94.5% in the working age population. If other parasites were included, almost every villager was a parasite host. At that time, the farmers used night soil to fertilize their fields, and this was often excreted by people with parasite infections. Then the fields would be worked in bare feet. When the vegetables were harvested and eaten, the infection would be carried back to the farmers. Mr. Yako was shocked at the survey results. The prevalence of parasites was far higher than he'd expected. This made me impatient to do something, but I wondered just what to do. My youthful energy wouldn't let me sit still. Should he form a private organization and try to eradicate parasitic infection through organized activities? Mr. Yaka came up with the idea of creating a center for parasite examination and called on his friends for support. Nobukatsu Maihara, a doctor, had helped Mr. Yaka immediately after the war. Mr. Yaka asked me to help, saying that without medical support or help from doctors, his task would be very difficult. I told him I'd just opened my own clinic and was busy, but he wouldn't take no for an answer and beseeched me for help. So I told him he could at least use my name for his work. Dr. Yoshiyuki Shiroma, although a little younger, had attended the same middle school as Mr. Yaka. One day I went to see Mr. Yaka on my day off. He was pleased to see me and very excited. He said, let's eradicate all parasitic infection from Okinawa. He grasped my shoulder and said very earnestly, we can do it together. Mr. Yaka also asked Dr. Kirio Nakachi for his help. Kirio Nakachi was a doctor and head of the Governmental Hygiene Research Center, an administrative body. Mr. Yaka had already started fighting parasites before the Okinawa government started, so we thought that it was more important for us to support his activities. We quickly realized that this approach was the most practical and effective, 
so we helped him as much as we could. Dr. Maihara was the supervising manager and Dr. Nakachi provided the technical supervision. Mr. Yaka quit his job as president of the pharmaceutical company and worked to set up a center for parasite examination. In July 1961, the non-governmental center for parasite examination was born in a two-story rented wooden house. This was the fourth year after Mr. Yaka first decided to fight Okinawa's parasites. We had finally made the first step. We had just started out, but now had to figure out how to actually go about eradicating parasitic infections. Perhaps it would be too much to say I couldn't sleep, but it was certainly an anxious time. The non-governmental center for parasite examination began by asking schools, local government offices, women's groups, and other groups and organizations to help them obtain stool specimens from their members. At schools and the administrative offices of villages, towns, and cities, the center held film and slideshows on parasite control to educate people about the prevention of parasitic diseases. However, because the people of Okinawa believed that having parasites in their stomachs and intestines was normal, they showed little interest. Even though the center was open for business, nobody sought a fecal examination for some time the office staff were discouraged and frustrated. With the rental expenses for the office and other ongoing costs, Mr. Yaka's debts started piling up. The situation began to look grim. But then some doctors came to the aid of the Center for Parasite Examination. Doctors Maihara, Shiroma, and Nakachi all volunteered their services in time in giving film and slide performances for parasite control. We all had professional skills. It's natural to expect payment for one's professional skills. But we were happy to work for nothing for the sake of Okinawa. So many Okinawans died in the war that we felt lucky to be alive. So we didn't feel we were making such a big sacrifice by donating a few hours of our time. It's because we were all friends. If someone needed help, we were willing to come to their assistance. This was the spirit of Okinawa's people. I felt quite elated by the selflessness of the doctors in donating their time. The future suddenly began to look bright. I thought, if the doctors could help, we could do it. I felt a surge of hope and courage. Finally, the Center for Parasite Examination got its first application for a group fecal examination. It came from an elementary school. The staff could not contain their joy, and a cry of banzai went up. Now that the elementary school had shown the way, other applications for fecal examination started trickling in from schools and local administrative bodies. Persistent educational and promotional activities, such as the film and slide performances for parasite control, had begun to pay off. Requests for film and slide performances for parasite control and fecal examinations now started flowing in from all sides. The Center for Parasite Examination became very busy. The work of the center was now fully underway at last. Doing the examinations, we got used to handling stools. Instead of stools or turds, we call them lab tests. It was quite interesting, especially Dr. Maihara. He's a great man. When we went to a bar, what do you think he said when we walked in? There would be lots of people drinking at the bar. He'd go in, raise his arm for attention, and call out, Everybody, let's have a fecal examination. It was unbelievable. But of course, we couldn't do them on the spot. When we went to a bar, we wouldn't drink much at all. We would just talk about the best ways of eradicating parasitic infections. We were all fired up with our mission of eliminating parasitic infection. After talking in the bar, we would go somewhere else and talk some more, often until midnight. Between July 1961 and May 1963, when the Center for Parasite Examination became an incorporated foundation, the center conducted 116,864 fecal examinations. An incorporated foundation is a public corporation. Public corporations in Japan are non-commercial organizations seeking to benefit the public. They are established with the approval of the competent authorities, that is, ministries and local government. Mm -hmm. 
Becoming an incorporated foundation confers many advantages. It is easier to get government support and tax exemptions. But establishing an incorporated foundation requires an endowment. This means finding supporters and collecting contributions. In 1963, Mr. Yaka felt it was necessary to make the Center for Parasite Examination an incorporated foundation so that its parasite fighting activities could be promoted across a much wider area and would enjoy public confidence. Although the public health centers had finished their fight against malaria, they were still busy battling widespread tuberculosis, filariasis, and sexually transmitted diseases. They didn't have the resources to fight parasitic infection as well. So Mr. Yaka established an association of supporters to look into incorporating the Center for Parasite Examination as a foundation. The manager of the Koza Public Health Center, Minoru Hara, was recruited to help. Mr. Yaka and Mr. Hara had known each other since Mr. Yaka's days as president of the pharmaceutical company. The Center for Parasite Examination agreed to support the public health centers because fighting parasites was part of the public health center's basic agenda. So a non-governmental group was backing up government programs as carried out by the public health centers. I thought this was a very good thing, so I joined Mr. Yaka's association of promoters. Mr. Yaka and the others visited Jugo Toma, ex-chief executive of the Ryukyu government, to ask him to become chairman of the new foundation. The head of a public benefit corporation had to be unselfish, have very high standing in the community, and be high-minded. Only Mr. Toma could offer these qualities. So I directly approached him and implored him to lead our foundation. He smiled and kindly accepted. When I jokingly suggested to Mr. Yaka, you and the others just want to use my name for the foundation, he openly agreed. Doctors Shiroma, Nakachi, Maihara, and the others told the foundation, if the medical association or the doctors support you, we will too. When we heard this, we yelled with delight. In June 1963, the Ryukyu government gave its approval and the Okinawa Parasite Control Association, an incorporated foundation, was established. The directors of the Okinawa Parasite Control Association were the vice director of the Welfare Bureau of the Ryukyu government, the chairman of the Okinawa Medical Association, the health center managers, and some chairmen of related organizations. Mr. Yaka served as the managing director. Mr. Yaka obtained a special telephone number for the Okinawa Parasite Control Association, 6474. In Japanese, it could be read as, No Parasites. All the members of the association were passionate about fighting parasites. Even after the Center for Parasite Examination became the Parasite Control Association, an incorporated organization, it still used the same offices. The only furniture and fixtures of any value were the refrigeration unit used to hold the lab tests and two microscopes. The new association was mainly funded from examination fees. The examination fees were five cents per person, the same as the group fecal examination fee charged by the Governmental Hygiene Research Center and the public health centers. If the fee was any higher, people might have refused fecal examinations. However, at five cents a person, costs were not covered. Mr. Yaka and Dr. Maihara worked for nothing. The supporting doctors and technicians also worked for free. The staff received minimal wages, and these were paid from loans taken out by Mr. Yaka. As an incorporated body, the Okinawa Parasite Control Association needed a secure financial foundation. Mr. Yaka and the others repeatedly petitioned the Ryukyu government to set the group fecal examination fee for public health centers and other public institutions at 10 cents per person, and finally the government agreed. The main focus of the association was spreading knowledge about parasites and promoting fecal or stool examination through hygiene education. At that time, three-wheeled Mazda trucks were quite common. I drove one of these, carrying a doctor in the passenger seat and staff on the platform at the back. We would go from village to village. I left the talk about parasites to the doctor and told the villagers how to collect stool samples. 
When it came to explaining stool collection, I found that a serious approach just didn't work. It was necessary to include jokes. When I did that, they would laugh at the jokes and remember what I had said. Some regions had private practitioners. I would always treat them with great respect. This would make them happy and they would cooperate. And they would come to our film and slide performance for parasite control. The public health nurses stationed in the villages, towns and cities would help gather the people for the film and slide performances for parasite control. We would not gather people by ourselves. We had to go through a local women's group or the chairman of the local community associations. This was the only way we could get people to come to the performances. If the stool tested positive, the patients would get drugs free of charge. The people were very attracted to the idea of getting treated for free. We encouraged the people to take examinations by telling them that if they took our drugs, they would soon get better. This was very effective. The public health nurses in the villages, towns and cities would come with us. The nurses were very passionate about fighting parasites, even more than we were. Mr. Nakachi of the Governmental Hygiene Research Center invited specialists from the Japan Parasite Control Association to help in fighting parasitic infection. The specialists calculated the economic loss hookworm was causing in Okinawa. The main damage the ancylostoma hookworm did was to suck people's blood. This would cause anemia and anemic people often couldn't work. If we based calculations on 20,000 people giving up work because of anemia in Okinawa, then the total loss to Okinawa was $30 million a year, a huge blow to the economy. This was what we worked out for one year. The specialists told us that at least 38% of the population was infected by hookworms, and that in that group every year the hookworm sucked at least enough blood, in total, to fill at least one 44-gallon drum. Even I was surprised by this, and I'm a doctor. When we told the patients this, they were always shocked. It certainly made them take the problem seriously. The economic statistics from the specialists were very useful in convincing the local authorities that fecal examinations were necessary. In the end, around 80% of the local authorities publicly funded fecal examinations, and examinations were free at 100% of the schools. So the damage to the economy caused by hookworms was very useful in promoting our program. The work of the association impressed not only people in Okinawa, but related organizations on the mainland. These contributed a steady stream of material and moral support. For the first time, the Ryukyu government allocated $1,500 to the Okinawa Parasite Control Association for hygiene education in its 1964 budget. At the time, we were inundated with serious public health issues. These were too big for the Ryukyu government, which was too weak, too poor and too small. One group eager to meet the demand for better public health was the non-governmental sector, which played a complementary role, particularly in relation to parasite control. The Ryukyu government worked hard to provide the budget and legislation and to create the necessary systems. Non-governmental sectors use these in their practical work in fighting parasites. The private sector played a very robust and remarkably effective role in this area. In April 1965, an unprecedented campaign to wipe out parasitic infection started. This was the Zero Parasite Campaign. This was a mass campaign in which the Okinawa Parasite Control Association, the Ryukyu Shimpo newspaper, Radio Okinawa, and Okinawa Television all worked together. 
The association was working hard to raise awareness of the need to fight parasites. But for some reason, we were not as successful as we wished. The Japan Parasite Control Association's newspaper was carrying articles on parasite prevention. One article was titled The Zero Ascaris Campaign. The content of this article was very admirable, and it gave me the idea of using the article's title and applying it more widely to our campaign. We would call it the Zero Parasite Campaign in order to capture the people's attention. Fortunately, the chairman of the Okinawa Parasite Control Association, Mr. Jugo Otoma, was also president of Radio Okinawa and Television Okinawa, and he was a director of the Ryukyu Shimpo newspaper too. With these connections, we decided we had to use the mass media in our campaign. We called in television and the newspapers and started a hard-hitting campaign that would reach people more effectively. The aim of the Zero Parasite campaign was to get the people to understand the serious threat that parasites posed and make them eager to eliminate the parasites themselves. Public health specialists, administrative bodies, and non-governmental sectors joined in the campaign. To support the campaign, Katsuya Kato, president of the Nagoya Institute of Public Health, visited Okinawa at his own expense and offered practical advice on a radical new examination method. This was the cellophane thick smear method. To whip up enthusiasm for the Zero Parasite campaign, forums, talks, and explanatory meetings were held all over the main island of Okinawa. These were covered by all the mass media. In April 1965, the Zero Parasite Campaign went into action. Designated the Yaka and Ige areas in the Kin Village district of the main island of Okinawa as model regions, 60 field workers made up of 21 doctors, 17 student nurses, and members of the Okinawa Parasite Control Association carried out free examinations for three months. In this first round of the Zero Parasite campaign, 34,874 people were tested for parasite infections as part of a mass parasite eradication program. Ichiro Oyadumari, business manager at the Ryukyu Shimpo newspaper, worked inside the newspaper to ensure that the Zero Parasite campaign made the top news every day. The medical staff were all working very hard, so we thought we'd get alongside them. When the people of Keen Village saw the medical people working so hard, they also felt moved to cooperate and give them the support they were asking for. This resulted in a sort of synergy effect. I believe this is why the campaign succeeded so well. Everyone was smiling and laughing while they worked, including Dr. Maihara and Mr. Yaka. We really did enjoy the work. Everyone joined in willingly and happily. The Zero Parasite campaign continued to its ninth round in 1969. As a result of the Zero Parasite campaign, parasite infections were eradicated and awareness of the need to fight parasite infections spread. Administrative bodies, academics, the local people, and mass media all worked together to mount a campaign linked to the regional communities, and the examinations were funded with public money. In English, the Okinawa Zero Parasite Campaign would be called a mass campaign. This means a big operation, including the ordinary people. Such campaigns are characteristically temporary. Other characteristics are that these campaigns carry out irregular tasks, have a special budget, and include special personnel. The most important thing for such operations is mass communications using the mass media. When the campaign is aimed at the people, it must get their attention. This is why mass campaigns are best. This is still an effective approach for public health activities. As a result of the aggressive activities of the Okinawa Parasite Control Association that continued after this campaign, parasite carrier rates changed dramatically. 
Okinawa Prefecture and the Governmental Hygiene Research Center received government subsidies. And from 1971, a special prevention project against hookworm diseases was implemented. And from 1987, projects against threadworm were taken. Both programs were very successful. When conducting examinations, it was vital for the group doing the examinations to win the trust of the local residents. In our case, fortunately, we always kept this in mind and results continually bore this out. It is extremely important to foster the trust of the local population. The next thing is money. That is why we asked the local administrative bodies at village, town, and city level to fund our work. Another important matter is the cost of the drugs needed to destroy the parasites and carriers. The anti-parasitics were kept in the public health centers, and the nurses organized the treatment for positive patients. The nurses instructed the patients on how to take the drugs and conducted mass treatments. Next, although examinations were conducted, whether those examinations were reliable depended on the examination technique. Accuracy was needed. On the average, the Kato-style cellophane thick smear method worked well. Finally, whether it was group health examinations or group fecal examinations, the important thing was not to stop at that. Follow-up was vital. So, when we followed up, we consulted with the medical association and sought the understanding of the local doctors. We issued cards regarding patients and took them to visit the local doctors and asked those doctors to look after the patients. Treatment and follow-up examinations were very important. As long as you have a microscope, you can easily identify a parasite carrier. And now we have drugs to treat those carriers. If we administer those drugs, the pathogens quickly go away. As a result, the patient's energy revives and the patient feels better, and his or her productivity rises. When going into an area, it's best to start with an area where results can be seen most quickly. Okinawa reverted to Japan in May 1972. The Okinawa Parasite Control Association merged with the Okinawa Family Planning Association to become the Okinawa Health Service Association, an incorporated foundation. Rapid economic development changed lifestyle and environments, and degenerative diseases increased. The Okinawa Health Service Association was formed to meet preventive medical needs in this area. The task of the Okinawa Health Service Association was to educate people about parasites and family planning, promote regular physical examinations, encourage examinations for the degenerative diseases of a mature population, and promote comprehensive medical examinations. Mr. Yoshiharu Ikemiya worked hard to strengthen this association, expand examinations, and improve facilities. <laughs> On joining the association, the first problem was the low wages of the staff. There was no money to pay the wages, so I had to borrow money from the bank. But they wouldn't lend it just like that. There was no choice but to mortgage my house, land, and all the buildings to take out a loan and pay the wages from that. Because we had survived and lived in Okinawa, we had a duty to serve the people, no matter how hard it was. So we had to work in places no one else wanted to go, however inconvenient those places were. We decided to use the profits from the cities and apply them in regional areas. In September 1990, to improve regional health further, three health organizations were merged to form the Okinawa General Health Association, an incorporated foundation. The three organizations merged were the Okinawa Health Service Association, the Okinawa Anti-Tuberculosis Association, and the Okinawa Cancer Society. The basic philosophy of the Okinawa General Health Association is to help improve the welfare of the local people and contribute to the maintenance of their health. 
This association functions as a comprehensive health body focusing on the prevention of diseases, especially lifestyle-related ones. The small Center for Parasite Examination, started by Mr. Yaka, grew into a large Okinawa non-governmental sector. What was the reason for its success? When I started the Center for Parasite Examination, the fight against TB was nearly over its peak. It was just about time to start on parasitic infections. I didn't actually make such an explicit calculation, but it seems that luck and timing was a major factor in our success. Another even bigger reason was the lineup of people we worked with. This was not something I could have done by myself. A major and basic reason the Zero Parasite Campaign worked and parasite infection prevention succeeded in Okinawa was the size of the population. A population of one million was very easy to work with from a public health viewpoint and was easy to get results from. This size of population is quite easy to organize. When we dealt with the government, it was only the Ryukyu government so non-governmental sectors and public officials could easily understand each other and work together well. Other staff were the same. People were familiar with one another and few explanations were needed. So a large reason we succeeded was that everywhere you went in Okinawa, people already knew each other. I felt that the people of Okinawa were good at solving problems themselves. Everyone shared in the joy of solving problems. Eradicating the parasites from our lives was important, but more than that, the eradication also gave us a psychological boost. This was a very significant factor. There was little money or resources, but people were willing. The passion of one man inspired and motivated others, and this had a ripple effect. The system of cooperation between administrative bodies and non-governmental health organizations was the greatest weapon in promoting public health activities rooted in the community. In today's Japan, with its aging population, preventive medicine is increasingly important. The Okinawa General Health Association is expected to achieve significant results in the future. At least one echo of Mr. Yaka's fight against parasites through the Parasite Control Association remains today in the Okinawa General Health Association. That is the association's telephone number, 6474, No Parasites.